In the previous module, we have looked into some examples of how to compute convolution of two signals. Convolution is actually the representation of an LTI system. Any LTI system can be characterized using the convolution sum. Now that convolution sum or the formula that we have obtained in the previous module possesses different properties. Let's look at those properties one by one. The first property that the convolution sum possesses is the property of commutativity. So the convolution sum or the integral in the continuous time case, for example, is commutative, meaning let's suppose you have a system being represented by its simple response. So you have a system that is being represented by its simple response by say h of n and if for example if you are applying some input say x of n and if you are getting the output as y of n then this representation and assuming that this system is linear as well as time invariant we know that the y of n is computed as a convolution sum of x and h. Now just to have a shorthand notation of convolution I would like to represent that convolution sum as x of n and a circle star into h of n. So the star here represents the convolution a shorthand notation for convolution that we are going to use. So let's assume that this is an LTI system and suppose if we give any input we get the output as the convolution sum of the impulse response of the system as well as the input. Now the commutative power property says we can exchange the roles of x and h meaning it doesn't matter what you treat those two signals as x or h. That will be clear if we analyze the equation of convolution. Now the equation of convolution in discrete case is y of n equals to summation k running from minus infinite to infinite x of k h of n minus k now the community property says we can exchange the rules of x and h. Now this we can prove something like this. Let's suppose you have this n minus k and replace that with a variable that is r. Now if n minus k is being represented by a variable r where k is running from minus infinite to infinite in that case r would run from infinite to minus infinite. So the resultant signal would be equals to summation. Now instead of k here it would be r that would run from infinite to minus infinite or minus infinite to infinite and that would be x of here it would be k being represented as n minus r and h of R. Now you may see here these two expressions are quite similar. Now here we can see that instead of having the convolution of x star h we have the convolution h star x that means this is equals to the convolution of h with x. So these two are equal. To be precise, I should write h of n convolution with x of n. Okay. 
what does that mean we can exchange the rules of x and h so let me write that that means x of n convolved with h of n is the same as that of h being convolved with x now this is very interesting that means we can exchange the rules of x and h so this would be the property of commutativity So you can try this out using the example that we have seen in the previous module. You just try to exchange the rules of x and h, meaning you treat the signal x as h and the signal h as x. You just exchange the rules and you'll get the same answer. So let me write the summary here that uh, the rules of x and h can be interchanged that means it doesn't matter what is x and what is h as long as you have two signals either of them can be treated as x or h let's look at another property of convolution second property that we are going to look at is distributive property the convolution sum is distributive now as i am considering the discrete time case here the same or the similar kind of approach applies for continuous time case also now let's look at this distributive property the distributive property says let's suppose you have a signal let's say x of n and you are feeding that signal to let's suppose two different systems so you have this x of n being fed to two different systems two different lts systems one being represented by let's say h1 of n so let me write that so i'm drawing here two different boxes so the first one representing the first system and the second one as the second system whose impulse response being represented as x2 of n so we are considering one signal x of n being fed to two different lts systems the first one is having impulse response as h1 of n the second one is having the impulse response of h2 of n and let's suppose we have recorded the outputs of these two individual systems let those outputs be y1 of n and y2 of n now let's suppose we have experimented this the distributive property says instead of having this two convolutions here we are performing two convolutions the original signal is actually convolved with h1 of n and also it is being convolved with h2 of n so the resultant output of y1 of n is actually the convolution of x of n with h1 of n whereas y2 of n is x of n being convolved with h2 of n the distributive property says if two signals if if two systems sorry if a signal is being fed to two different systems in parallel these two individual impulse responses can be added that means this is same as x of n 
being fed into a system whose impulse response is the addition of two individual responses so suppose we have this x of n being convolved with h1 of n plus h2 of n what does this mean suppose we have a signal that is being fed to two different systems and let's suppose we have recorded the outputs as y1 of n and y2 of n now this individual outputs and let's suppose we add them so the resultant output would be y of n equals to y1 of n plus y2 of n now in this operation we have fed the same signal to two different systems and we have got the output as the summation of two different output signals now instead of doing that we can simply add the impulse responses of individual systems and then perform a single convolution operation so that is also valid so this property is called as a distributive property so this y of n here is equals to x of n convolved with a summation of two individual impulse responses so this i can write that this is equals to x of n convolved with h1 of n plus x of n being convolved with h2 of n and we know this individuals are y1 of n and y2 of n so in a sense this convolution is actually distributed over the summation of two individual impulse responses of the systems so the summary is let's suppose i have an input signal being fed to two different systems in parallel and let's suppose if we add those two individual outputs we get some signal y of n now that signal would be same if we convolve the input signal with the addition of the impulse responses of these two systems so if we have this individual outputs y1 of n and y2 of n if i add them together it is equivalent to having the convolution of the input signal with the added impulse responses of those individual systems this property is called as a distributive property of convolution let's look at some other property of convolution the third property that we are going to look at is called as associative property convolution sum is associative way. meaning let's suppose i am having an input signal being fed to a system so let's consider a box as a system and let's say i am giving an input and taking the output from the system so let this be x of n and let this be h of n and let the output be y of n now assume that this is an lti system and of course this convolution sum is valid for only lti system now this y of n is x of n convolved with h of n now let's suppose we have another system followed by this h of n so i would represent that as now let me rub this and have another system let's 
let the system be say g of n and check the output now let this combined output let that be y of n what is the output here intermediate the intermediate output here is x of n being convolved with h of n what is the output here well y of n here is equals to x of n being convolved with h of n and whole being convolved with g of n now associative property says that we can interchange these blocks that means it doesn't matter with what system you are convolving the input signal if they are in cascade or one after the other you can always exchange these blocks that means this is equivalent to having the system arrangement something like this so i am simply interchanging the order of the two blocks so let this be h of n let it be the same input x of n and let this be the output here y of n now what is the intermediate output here the intermediate output here is x of n being convolved with g of n now what is y of n here y of n is x of n convolved with g of n and the whole is getting convolved with h of n that means you can exchange the rules of the two blocks here the two blocks in cascade can be exchanged so it doesn't matter what is the order in which you are convolving the input signal you can try this with an example so you can take some let's say x of n and you can take two different signals let's say h of n and g of n as some discrete sequences and try this out and you would get the same answer we shall see into some other properties in the next module